Good morning. Welcome. Um, today we're celebrating the baptism of our Lord. When uh, Jesus went into the Jordan River with John the Baptist and was baptized, and the heavens were opened, and the Holy Spirit came down in the form of a dove and anointed Jesus. Jesus was anointed in the Jordan by the Holy Spirit, and the voice of the Father said, This one is my Son, with whom I am well pleased. Today we have a, a special treat. We have Jacob Smith preaching. And Jacob is a, a fourth year, right? Which means 2021 is a big year for him. It's the year he gets placed. Uh, he'll be called by a congregation this year, and he'll be placed into a congregation to preach God's word. So we're so, uh, we're so happy about that and excited for him. Um, also, one note, we have an inquirers class starting. This is our, our new member class, uh, Thursday at 6.30. And if you meet at these church doors, we'll go down to the basement for the inquirers class, Thursday at 6.30. Uh, also, if, even if you're a long time member, maybe you've been a member of this church for 80 years, this class is for you too. You, you're welcome to come, and, uh, and there's a lot of great information, and I'm sure you will learn something new uh, because th there's always, always more to learn. So please consider that Thursday at 6.30. Now you can turn and greet your brothers and sisters.
haste, O God, to deliver me. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. <laughs> the voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders, the Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars, the Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. <laughs> the voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all cry glory. <laughs> May 
the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. A reading from Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him 
in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For the one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God.
Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. A reading from Mark chapter 1. We read together. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Honor of the habitation of your house and the place where your glory is. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, Christmas has come and gone, and back at my house, we probably took down about 99% of our Christmas decorations. Here in church, the flowers are gone. The kids are back in school. You're probably back to work. And life is back to normal. And so throughout this week, as I was thinking about life getting back to normal, all I could think about were our traditions. Our traditions during Christmas and during New Year's. And we all have our own traditions. No two traditions are ever the same. But I bet there's one tradition we probably all have in common. And that is at some point during the Christmas season, we take a picture. We take a picture to remember all who we celebrate it with, and we take a picture to remember the memories and the time. And then years later, we look at this picture and it makes us smile. And I bet we all have our favorite picture or two from Christmas's past. Maybe it's when your family who is spread out around the U.S., around the world, finally got together that one Christmas. So you look at that picture and it just makes you smile. Maybe it's a picture of the last Christmas you spent with a loved one and so you cherish it. Or maybe it's just a picture of a Christmas where something special happened. You got married, you got engaged, you had a child, something special happened. So you look at that picture, and it reminds you about all those times. But when we look at pictures, we don't just think about what happened at that moment. We also think about all that has taken place since, the good, the bad, and everything else in between. And I think in some ways, that's how we view the baptism of Christ. Imagine with me just for a moment the scene of Jesus' baptism. It's probably low to mid-80s. 
And for those of you who don't like the heat, there's a nice cool breeze. So it's not too hot, not too cold. And then we look up into the sky, and it's a bright blue sky, a few wispy clouds here or there, but all in all, a beautiful summer day. And then you have the Jordan River, flowing right by, lazily. It's the type of day you could spend with your family, have a picnic, read, and just relax. And then we look, and there's John the Baptist, wearing his signature camel hair clothes, his leather belt, preaching the forgiveness of sins, but there he is, alive and well. It's almost picture perfect. And then we view and turn, and we see the star of this picture. For here comes Jesus, the one that John says is mightier than him, the one that John says will baptize them with the Holy Spirit. Here comes God in the flesh. But here he comes to be baptized, to live the perfect life that Israel never could, that we never could. And so here he comes to be baptized, to start his earthly ministry. And as he gets into that water and John dips him and he comes back up, that's when we have our picture. Because then the skies open up, we hear the voice of God, you are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. And we see the Holy Spirit coming down like a dove. And there we have it. We have God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, and in the middle of this wonderful, beautiful picture, we have God the Son. And even standing there with him is John the Baptist. What a reunion. What a picture. And so as we see this picture, and we've all seen recreations of this scene, we probably can't help but maybe smile a little bit. It's a great picture. It's a happy picture. And just like with any picture, as we look at this, we think about all that's about to take place. Because here we are at the beginning of Christ's ministry. We think about how right after this he's going to be tempted in the wilderness And yet, unlike Israel, unlike us, he won't fall into temptation. We think about all the wonderful stories that are about to come, all the miracles, the feeding of the 5,000, casting out the demon known as Legion into those pigs, Peter walking on water, Jesus calming the storm, some of our favorite Bible stories. And we can't help but think about all that's going to happen over the next three years. All the twists and turns, the ups and downs that will take place during Jesus' ministry. But this will all lead to one place. One more picture that we don't really like to look at. For just as much as we like to look at old Christmas photos, there are some Christmas photos we don't like to look at. Some that bring up bad memories, some that bring up troubling times, and so we like to scroll or flip right past those photos because, well, we'd rather be happy. We'd rather remember the good times. We'd rather smile. And in the same way, we do that with the life of Jesus. We love to look at the baptism of Jesus and think about all the stuff that's about to happen, all the wonderful things that we get to hear and read about. But eventually, the life of Jesus will lead us to that one picture that we like to skip right over. We like the picture after it, but this picture, we don't. Because this picture is as opposite as opposite can get. Where Jesus' baptism was a beautiful summer's day, and this day is dark, unnaturally dark, suffocatingly dark. 
because it was supposed to be three in the afternoon, and yet there was no sun. Gone was the sun. And then when we look to see where John the Baptist is in this picture, well, he's long gone. He's nowhere to be seen. And in his place, we have reaping women. In his place, we have passerbys with a head straight down, walking as fast as they can, hoping no one will notice them. And we see Roman soldiers all over the place. Gone is the voice of God. And in fact, it seems like God is nowhere to be found. And this time, as we shift our view to Jesus, there we see him hanging on a cross. There we see him naked, bleeding, in pain and agony, trouble simply breathing, and being mocked. We don't like this picture. No, instead, we like the picture of that cross. We like the empty cross. And that is why so often we skip to that picture. Because we don't like to see our Savior, our God, in pain and agony. We don't like to see what our sin has caused. We would rather just ignore it, and we would rather just go to the empty tomb, the empty cross. But the baptism of Christ leads to this ugly picture. And I would like for us to spend maybe a little bit longer on this picture than we would like. For you see, on that cross is where we see God's love clearly. A love that sent him to that cross because he thought you and me were worth spending every second every single day with. He looked at us, us who sin every single day, who can't even comprehend going a day without sinning, he looked at us and said all this pain, all this agony, all this suffering, and yes, even death is worth it so that I could spend time with you. And that That is the love of our God. And nowhere do we see that love more perfectly than when our God is hanging on that cross because of what we have done. And that, that is what we hold on to. Because as much as we like to pretend Christmas is this magical time, as we sit here on January 10th, we know our problems haven't gone away. No, they're still here. And maybe some of you or someone you know wonders where God is during this time. Because God seems so far away. God seems to be gone. And so I implore you to go back to that cross. To go back to our God hanging on that cross. For there we see God's love. There we see how far our God will go for each one of us. That cross may be hard for us to look at, but there we see God's love. There we see what the baptism of Christ leads him to. And so I point you back to the cross, to seeing the love of our God. But we all know that the cross is not the end of the story. No, we finally get to flip or scroll to that next picture, the picture we love so much, that of the empty tomb, that of the empty cross. Because death could not hold back our God. No, our God conquered even death. And now he watches over us, protects us, and showers us with blessing upon blessing. And we do not have to look any farther than the head baptismal font. Because at our baptism, we are united in a death like his. It means we are united in a resurrection like his. At that font, we receive life everlasting, just like how our God cannot be held by death. We cannot be held by death. 
because at that thought, we have received Christ. So yes, we may struggle during this life, we may question where God is, and yet we rejoice. As crazy as that might seem to this world, as crazy as this might seem to maybe some of us, we still rejoice in our sufferings. Not because our sufferings are trivial, no, they're real, and they're painful. But we rejoice because we know that they are but temporary and that eternal life is ours. So I point you back to the cross. I implore you to point others to the cross when they're wondering where God is, when they're suffering, because there, there we see God's love, and there we see how far our God will go for us. But we don't stop there. No, because then we go back to our baptism. For there we are clothed with Christ. There we receive life everlasting. There God looks at us and says, You are my son. And that is what we cling to. That is what we hold on to in this life. During the good, the bad, and everything else. We cling to the cross. We cling to our baptisms. And we cling to the resurrection. For there is where God's love is, and that is where we receive life everlasting. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
We worship the Lord with our offerings. You may be seated. Stand for prayer. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved Son, and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized in his name faithful in their calling as your children, and inheritors with him of everlasting life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the picture of Jesus' baptism and for the joy that it gives us. For we know that this was the beginning of his ministry for us, a ministry that led your servant to the cross. And although it is difficult to gaze upon that cross, we thank you for that picture as well. For there our sins were laid upon him. There our forgiveness was secured, knowing that you sent him there in love for us, that that's a picture of your love, which we also receive in our baptism. We thank you this day that you sent your beloved Son to the cross for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for our seminaries, and we ask that you would bless our seminaries. And this day, we especially pray for Jacob. We pray that this spring you would call him to a place where he is needed, and that he might always preach your word boldly, and faithfully with great joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our congregation and her school and all our Lutheran schools. We pray for our pastors, our principal, our teachers and our staff, our volunteers and all the people, that you would increase our faith, that you would fill us with love and joy and peace. We pray for our renovations, 
that you would already be pre preparing us for next school year. And we ask that you would guide and guard our future, even as you have done in the past. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we ask that you would be with all the families of our congregation, that you would watch over our homes, that you would fill us with your spirit, that our homes would be a place of the word of God in prayer. We thank you for our own baptisms. We thank you for the baptism of Hope Weiss later this morning. And this week, we especially pray for Crystal Knowles and her family, the Knox family, Kevin and Patricia Cole Morgan, Marie Corberly and her family, and Richard and Janet Kuba. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our nation. We pray for all those in authority, that there would be peace and order, that there would be justice and healing, that you would give everybody wisdom and a calm heart. And we ask that in all things you would guide the affairs of this world for the good of your church, that more might hear the gospel and believe and be saved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for those who are sick and undergoing various trials in their life. We pray for all those on our prayer list, and we pray for all those we now name in our hearts. And Father, I especially pray this day for Diane, for Dennis, for David, and for Jim. Grant them healing, Lord, according to your will. Give them strength to face their trials and keep their eyes focused on your Son and his cross, for there we receive eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.